astronauts are bringing back a wealth of knowledge collected from 14 experiments on board the space shuttle. The crew completed its last experiment early this morning by shooting an electron beam toward the Earth. NASA says that will help scientists learn more about our outer atmosphere. Now the crew is preparing for a landing on a desert runway at Edwards Air Force Base in California. CNN will, of course, carry live coverage of that this afternoon. The shuttle is scheduled to touch down about 3.45 Eastern Time, 12.45 Pacific Time. That's live here on CNN. If you live in the plains or... ...because the crew overcame problems in the early part of the void. Moy from Tom Mintier. The extra day in space was scheduled 24 hours before a faulty solar experiment suddenly started working. Scientists documents down and the orbiter comes over like this and so that the heat tiles begin to see the atmosphere and they fly a series of rolls back and forth like this to lose energy as it comes down. To slow down. <laughs> to slow down and then it comes across the uh, uh, comes across the California coast very high, I think Mach 4, Mach 5, and then so we'll hear a double into, sonic boom across we'll sonic the coast. Boom. I think south of Los Angeles is where it's supposed to come across the coast. Preparations have been going on in the uh, area of California. The uh, dry lake bed uh, at uh, Edwards Air Force Base has been readied, and the, you can see here the uh, convoy has already started moving out to uh, where Challenger will touch down. They report uh, no real wind problems. The reason they scheduled the early return, they expect some high winds there. They have uh, just about eight knots of wind uh, right now, and the uh, uh, servicing units and everything else are moving into position uh, for a landing scheduled uh, about uh, 56 minutes from right now. And uh, we, of course, will have the uh, landing live here on CNN as they return from their eight days in space and return to California at the dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base. So we will be back uh, in less than one hour to provide that live coverage. Donabel? Across the coast of California, passed over Los Angeles at about 4,000 feet per second. And uh, I'm sure they've already heard the double sonic boom as uh, there he is right there, the double sonic boom. And uh, for Roy, the right tape should be good now. Power supply looks good. Okay, they're coming into their final circle now. Challenger at 47,000 feet altitude, velocity 930 feet per second. From the time they, they fired the uh, rockets to, to bring them into this uh, trajectory to come into Edwards, uh, it's gone flawlessly. There hasn't been any, any problems at all. That's right. There was, a, there was sort of a heart in the throat moment there over Canberra where he said his attitude didn't, wasn't matching with his onboard computer. And then they got one of these marvelous sort of 10-second bites over Canberra where he said, now nah, it looks okay. People were on the edge of their seat there for a minute. The people in California, uh, of course, can hear and uh, probably at this point now just about uh, see the shuttle as it passes over. Yeah, that's right. Now uh, acquiring the heading you get a You get a sonic boom off the nose and off the wings, and so it's a double sort of a boom when it passes overhead. Coming on the heading alignment circle, now altitude 30,000 feet. And it comes down fast, let me tell you. <laughs> They'll make uh, one, what looks like a wide sweeping turn uh, right. before they make their landing on the. Uh, this is that mar marvelous term, energy management, <laughs> which yeah, says that you want to get to the runway when you don't have any energy left. You don't want to have too much and you don't want to have too little. It's one of NASA's benign terms that is a lot more exciting than you, than it sounds. <laughs> we spent the last eight days uh, in space uh, troubleshooting some of the instruments, but uh, for the most part of the time, uh, gathering a vast amount of uh, scientific information that's probably going to take years to unravel and fully understand some of the pictures and computer images they got back. Really, a tremendously su successful mission, and the third of the Space Lab series. All three of them very successful. We're growing this capability that we have now to do a science in a, just a variety of different disciplines. And so marvelously with the shuttle, all the instrumentation comes back, you get to put it together into a new payload and fly it again, saving you just millions and millions of dollars by being able to reuse it. And with four orbiters, the turnaround is uh, very quickly. Uh, uh, August 24th, they're going to begin another mission. That's right. We'll do the go up and see if we can't fix a satellite on that mission and deploy several. Challenger on glide slope. 
Challenger has now made its final turn, lining up on the runway at Edwards Air Force Base in California. When you look at this coming down, it looks like he's going to overshoot the whole runway because you're normally used to looking at airplanes Challenger, coming Houston, down. Houston, we show you on glide slope, a converging center line, winds 160 at 6. And but the winds have calmed down a little bit uh, in the last hour. They were up at uh, 8 knots, uh, about an hour ago. Velocity 550 feet per second. Beautiful out there. slope, approaching center line. There was some concern. Uh, they br brought it about an hour and 10 minutes early in because of the uh, the winds they feared were going to whip up a little uh, Yeah, just lighter in the day. Yeah, the, I think the earlier the, in the day you get in, the better. Weather out there is great. Glide dynamics officer reports on center line on glide slope, altitude 3,000 feet. Descending 180 feet per second. Velocity 550 feet per second. For so many of the different disciplines now, we've got instrumentation. This, uh, the solar instruments are going to go into another space lab. Sun lab. Gear down. Here we go. The space plasma Don't instruments into feet. a space plasma lab. some time uh, before the uh, seven men uh, from the space lab mission uh, actually walk down the front steps. They have to make sure that uh, all of the uh, areas around the orbiter are safe and, and free of any uh, leaks or anything like that. That's right. And this is also within the cabin, the time when your, your inner ear, all of the inner ear vestibular system of the astronauts now has got new data coming in that it has not had for a week. And it, it's nice to have a few minutes there to sort of readjust. Uh, standing up is a little bit rocky right at the beginning. Going over some of the scientific achievements of the uh, past eight days, uh, some of the views of the sun that we've never seen before, uh, uh, growing uh, plants in space and testing blood samples and working to uh, possibly find a cure for cancer even on this mission. That's right. The, um, where they processed some of the crystals. And in fact, uh, Story Musgrave said earlier today that, that in, in looking at the crystal growth experiment that they, were, they looked like they had some marvelous crystals, which will then be used for uh, uh, doing actual studies of the shape of the molecule. These molecules important in cancer research, as you point out. Challenger Houston, we've got a couple deltas for you now. Fantastic things in solar physics, unprecedented views of the sun in terms of our ability to resolve the very small features on the solar disk. And this is leading us toward a couple of missions in solar physics coming downstream and then ultimately toward the space station where we'll carry a telescope that, that will be even more capable than the one we have here that learns a great deal from the data that we have here. So the 19th shuttle mission now goes into the record books. It will be some time, though, before scientists really fully understand what they've received with the eight days of data that they had. It's going to be a quick turnaround. Discovery is now on the launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center and will be set for launch on the 24th of this month after some engineers take a look at some problems which began at the beginning of this mission with the engines that uh, really did almost uh, scare everyone uh, tremendously, but they will uh, be making a close check of those before the next.